Hi, this is Beatrice Leonard right here at Chris Radio at Chicago Lighthouse, along with Travelers with Disabilities Having Fun. And we were always told that good things happen to those who wait. And we did. And so now we have the author of Gertrude Schultz. Aha! Some of you didn't know that or remember that from her books. So let me go back to Goldie Bear Catering Service. So we have Diane Mott Davison, and I'm so excited that you're here with us today. Well, I'm excited to be on the phone with you. (laughs) Is your husband, in reading some of the uh, information I have on you, he sends you cookies when you're on tour. Is he like Tom Schultz? He's a lot like Tom Schultz. I, I'm so glad I invented a, a good husband for Goldie because before she married Tom, the he jerk, had a horrible ex-husband, right? Ugh. And so my husband Jim, he would come to signings with me, and people would say to him, "Are you the jerk?" <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. That's why I gave her a really, really nice husband, so people would stop asking that question. So she can have a good husband like you do. You know, in reading your books, I've read all of them. I've watched oh. Goldie grow and mature. Um, I had also worked with Sarah Zen for domestic violence, so I watched her oh, growth, yeah. her fears. Um, mm-hmm. I watched her when she started dating Tom, the hesitancy mm-hmm. that was there, and, and the yes. trust. I watched it with Archie and and just her just really developing into a wonderful woman. Oh, thank you. But with Goldie, sometimes (laughs) I'm, Uh I'm I'm concerned about her because... As the young people say with Bryzilla in, in your new book. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, when that lady slapped her, I just knew I was going to throw my talking book across the room. <laughs> and et cetera. And Goldie just stood there. And, and I appreciate it. But I would like to see Goldie. I mean, she. I was proud of her speaking up. But come right. on, Diane, you know, don't do her like that. Well, you know, I have to tell you, in the first draft... I had the bride slapped Goldie, and Goldie slapped her right back. <laughs> okay, okay. And uh, and my editor said, "Yeah, well, how is she going to get more, um, uh, you know, client bookings if she's slapping the clients?" So anyway, I know. Really got hers in the end. <laughs> she Viol- did. <laughs> Violence I know. never works. And the part that's so funny is that when you use that Bryzilla, I said you could tell Diane it's around young people using that Bryzilla. And our young people here in Chicago calls it signifying when you said Bryzilla. So all of us knew she was going to be a horrible, horrible person. Oh, well, and the thing is, they become crazy. Mm -hmm. This is what I learned. Now, I I have to say, I did cater a couple of really nice, calm weddings, okay? Mm -hmm. But... There are other times where, uh, and if it's not the bride, if it's not the bride, it's the maid of honor. I know all of the witches. <laughs> I know, and, and so, um, and and this changing the menu and changing the menu mm-hmm. is what these people do when they're really, really nervous. Mm-hmm. When really, what they should be doing is going into premarital counseling <laughs> instead of. Uh, and catering, that anxiety. and arranging right. catering too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> free catering right. counseling. <laughs> when my husband and I got married, we've been married forty years, uh-huh. and, and premarital counseling was required. Yes, it was. I, yeah, and I don't think it's required anymore. But what about pre-catering counseling too, so they can stop changing <laughs> their minds like this? You know, well, I, that's a good idea. I was very happy and pleased, and then disappointed again when we met oh. her godfather, Jack. Yeah, and I just knew now that you were going to give us a relative of Goldie's that will at least travel a little bit with us. Is mm-hmm. it possible for Goldie to wake up one morning with Tom and tell Tom I had the worst nightmare? I dreamed that my godfather Jack had died, and I had the worst wedding in the world, and we could bring him back like that. Because I would love to see her with a relative. Uh, well, that's for, oh, thank you. That's a very interesting idea. I love ideas like this. Uh, I have had complaints, did Jack have to die and all that, but I wanted to use this idea, which I had had from my youth, Mm -hmm. of someone close to the family who um, brings puzzles and games, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I had had that, you know, I had Mm -hmm. someone uh, close to our family who was always bringing me little games and riddles and puzzles. And I thought uh, that would be perfect for Jack, you know. But he, I just like him. He's very classy. 
Mm-hmm. I think that he makes Goldie think a great deal. I like that. Yes. Yeah. And so, and I like the idea, too, that he was involved with her. So maybe yeah. Jack doesn't stay around a long time. Maybe he'll stay there in Colorado for a while and decide to go back. But I said, maybe Goldie can just wake up one morning and tell Tom I had the worst dream. I dreamed <laughs> that my Uncle Jack had died and I had the worst wedding from hell and et cetera. And I just thought that because he is so cool. I like him. I really, I, know. Really I like do. him too. I like him too. I really do. What the interesting dilemma for the mystery writer is to have a victim mm-hmm. that people care about, and so and that's what I had with Jack, and that's how Goldie gets involved. It always mm-hmm. has to be a victim that Goldie cares about. Um, so, but I hate to keep having her have these loss. I mean, she's growing yeah. so strong. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I like that. It shows a woman that has been involved with domestic violence that there is a chance that you're able to do this. And it is a step by step because you have been conditioned. Yeah. And I think yeah. Marla is a good friend for her, too, in terms of strength. Yes, a wonderful friend. She is She's that. a wonderful friend. I swear to God, it looks like we just started talking. I know, I know. And I want you to tell me everything that we need to know about your new book coming out. I don't like the idea of the information I read every 18 months. I just don't think we need to wait like that, Ms. <laughs> Davidson. I really well, don't. <laughs> there is there is a short story I wrote for the Rocky Mountain News that's on my website. It's called Beginnings 1982. That's a prequel. Okay. Um, so you could, you know, read the prequel. Okay. And it's about a blizzard, and it's when she's still married to the jerk. You know, Arch is little, and that sets up the whole Yolanda thing, who's the Cuban-American. Okay. Friend. But anyway. Um, and can we have your website address? Oh, sure. It, it's www.dianemottdavidson.com, and then that will direct you over to HarperCollins maintains the website, because okay. uh, William Morrow, my publisher, but they're part of HarperCollins, okay. and then the paperback is, you know, from Harper. In any event, I'm working on this whole stalking phenomenon. I mean, after hearing this report on the radio, mm-hmm. then going and reading this book that this poor woman, a college professor, right. had to write under a pseudonym, I was just... You know, what I say is a cook goes to the refrigerator to take out ingredients for a meal, but a writer goes to the emotional refrigerator. Yes. And uh, so this became a part of my emotional refrigerator. I had to write about this. And again, it had to be someone who was close to Goldie. And it's Yolanda. And it's Yolanda. And She's so cool. She and the sergeant. I'm, I'm keeping my yeah. fingers crossed. I'm going to start a rumor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she is She is cool. You know, she uh-huh. is cool. Yes, and she is. Uh, she's going to have to move in with Goldie because of her grandmother who's in a wheelchair. And they okay. can't, they actually, this is a small area, and they actually can't uh, accommodate disabled people at the safe house, the mountain area safe house is mm-hmm. too small. Put a wheelchair user, but check yeah. it out there at your shelter and yeah. you'll see how some wheelchair users are really in bad situations when they're in domestic violence situations, especially in our disabled community. So if everyone wants some yeah, information, just tell Joseph, oh, he is a doll. He's another yeah. hunk. You're just surrounded by hunk men, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you mean my publicist? Uh-huh, hunk, uh, Joseph He is a Pablo. delight. You know, he is a delight. He, yes. um, I met him in Richmond. He was uh-huh. working for the Library of Virginia when I did a, a job there. And he said he was, you know, looking to move to New York and try to find a job there. So I called up my publicist, Dee Dee DeBartlow, and said, look, I have somebody really great to recommend to you. And she hired him. Oh, she that is him. so cool. I want to thank you so much for being with us. And- oh, Beatrice, it's been a pleasure. Oh, I had so much fun fun with you and tell Goldie I said yo as the kids say tell yes. Jack I expect for him to come back out of Goldie's terrible nightmare of a dream tell oh, Gus I said sweet. thank you so much for being a good friend to Arch tell oh. Julian to give me more vegetarian recipes uh, my agent is a vegetarian <laughs> and that's why um, I, you know she said where are the vegetarian recipes and so then I, I had to do vegetarian recipes. Which is all good. Hang on right there. I want to thank all of my listeners. I know you guys are going to have an absolute ball with this. And I want to thank my engineer today, Brian Hawkins, for keeping us on the air and asking everyone to have a wonderful and marvelous travel experience. This is Beatrice Leonard signing out, and have a great day.